So this is the brand new 2021 G22 BMW 420D. Now, we're starting at the front of the car here and that's for an obvious reason. There's been a lot of debate about this new grille. And if you've watched any, se uh, any videos on the new 4 Series, you will know people are saying that in person it looks a lot better. And having sort of spent some time looking at this car, I can verify that is definitely the case. It's funny because on pictures it actually looks a lot bigger. But when you see the car in person, it, it fits the car perfectly well actually, both in its proportions and its shape and its design. So I think this actually looks really, really good. I wouldn't be alarmed by it. The front end of the car, of course, is pretty aggressive. And this is like a design style we're starting to see on the new BMWs now, especially in the cars that are like the M Sport packages like this. And it looks great. We've got some really nice aggressive grills on the front, actually. Barely any fake grills. And we will get to that a bit later on. The main grill itself has these little vents in it that actually open up when the engine gets to a you know, certain temperature or the ambient temperature outside as a certain temperature. So you can kind of see that's a little bit blocked off here, but when you're driving and the engine gets hot, these do actually open. You can see the lower half though is totally open. We've got this kind of, there's a level of automation on this car, so we've got a sensor down here, but to be honest, you don't really notice that too much. And actually the number plate itself does kind of block off a little bit of that grille and makes it seem a little bit less sort of protruding on the front end of the car. So we've also got these very cool little kind of side ducts here, and these are actually real and they do feed air down the side. And I just think that looks great. It adds a quite a nice level of aggressiveness to the front end. And you can see that the whole way through the way that we've got these little creases that run here, this bulge on the bonnet all kind of feeds down to the front. It's actually somewhat reminiscent of the new G82 M4 and of course actually the G80 M3 seen as they basically share the front end. So yeah, I think it looks really good. Nice thin headlights. And overall, it just gives this thing real road presence. And this is just the 420D. I mean, this isn't like, you know, a really high end model in the range. So I think they've done a great job at making this car look and, uh, and feel the way it should. So moving down to the wheels then, we've got these very nice M Sport 19 inch rims set against some nice beefy M Sport brakes. And I know I bang on about this a lot, but I like a nice set of uh, calipers and discs and they always do a fantastic job on these new M Sport models. Nice big calipers on the front. We've got some pretty big ones on the rear as well. Uh, vented discs, of course, but these aren't like cross drilled or anything like that, but it looks really nice. There's quite a lot of attention to detail going on in these alloys themselves. And it certainly looks like something quite premium and quite high end, uh, which you'd expect with a car like this, of course. It's running on a 225 uh, section front tire and it's actually 255 sections on the rear. So quite a bit of mechanical grip from these tires, but we will talk about the driving dynamics later on when we take this thing out on the road. Moving on to the side of the car then, this is where it really comes together because of course the 4 Series is the coupe and we've got this very nice sort of sleek design that runs all the way down and we'll talk about the interior actually in a little bit because obviously one of the concerns with a sloping sort of roof is that the back seats are virtually unusable but that's really not the case in this car. As I say, it's, it really feels like quite reminiscent of bigger GT cars. Of course, this is just the 4 Series. So, you know, in terms of where it sits in the lineup, it's well below the likes of the 8 Series, but it's very reminiscent. We've got these really nice big doors and they're totally frameless around the window as well. Again, just making the whole thing feel very, very premium. So the rear of the car then, well, I think this is actually one of the best looking bits. We've got this really nice little lip spoiler that's just sat on the boot lid there. And again, all these lines kind of fold into the back. It's a very aggressive looking rear end. We've got a diffuser-like kind of rear bumper, and two tailpipes at either side, nicely set apart, and some very cool kind of like thin tail lights. These are obviously effectively the same ones that are on the uh, G23 series. And again, I said in that video when we re reviewed that I really liked how this car looked. So yeah, it's very, very kind of reminiscent of that design style. We've got some sort of vents down the side, um, of, you know, the rear arches there these are actually fake they don't really go anywhere so you know it's not it's not ideal but they look good it adds once again a very nice level of aggressiveness to this car and as i say this is great this is just the 420d but it really looks quite special so as i mentioned coupe people might be concerned about how much space there actually is but fear not if we look in the boot of this thing it is huge it goes i mean what must be four foot back from the load bay um and you know, even this kind of access hole here is quite good. Often what you get on these coupes and saloon cars is that you have quite an narrow opening, but no issues at all carrying tons of camera equipment. You've got nice little gaps down kind of into the wheel arches as well where you can store things. It's just fantastic. You could easily do 
long journeys in this car. And I suppose that's really what it's aimed at because it's pretty much a GT. So the interior of the G22 then, what do we think? Well, as always with BMW products of late, um, this feels very, very well done. It's extremely premium feeling. Again, you get that really nice smell of leather coming through and all the materials and touch points feel very, very high end. I know I mentioned some similar things actually in the 330i review we did last year. And a lot of the materials in here are obviously the same as that, including this kind of metal effect around the center console and some metal buttons as well dotted about. It just, it just feels nicely done. The seats. Well, these are very comfortable. You know, these aren't the most aggressive seats you can get in the four series, obviously. Uh, the likes of the M4 are gonna be much more aggressive than these, but these are a very nice balance between the kind of two. The leather feels great. There's plenty of adjustability. And I was actually amazed at how low you can get this seat. Um, I feel like I'm really sat on the floor, which is fantastic, obviously, from a driving perspective. And yeah, they're just, they're just really comfortable. I can imagine, once again, doing big, long distances in this car without any issues. The steering wheel, well, it's the classic kind of new BMW steering wheel, and it's perfectly good at what it does. Okay, maybe the rim's just a little bit thick, but we've got used to that now. And, you know, it works fine. The steering, of course, is nice and quick as well, but we, as I said, we will get onto that a bit later on. So overall, I'm, I'm really impressed with how this feels. And, you know, these cars aren't cheap, and it really feels like that money is very well spent in here. So as I mentioned, uh, the rear of the car is perfectly usable. I've got my seat in the driver's position. I'm five foot 10. I've got ample headroom here. I mean, if you were maybe six foot, it might be getting a little bit tight back here, but to be honest, this feels perfectly comfortable. And it's very nicely trimmed in here. We've got these little leather kind of armrests. We've got the sound system. It's actually a Harman Kardon sound system in this car, which a lot of the new BMWs are coming with. As I've mentioned tons of times, it's a fantastic sound system. It's as good as it really gets, you know, uh, for this kind of price point at least. Now, the sloping headline, yeah, okay, it's pretty good. It doesn't feel too claustrophobic back here. As I say, there is a kind of decent amount of headroom. We've even got dual zone climate control. So in the back here, I've got control over that. And it's, it's just perfect. As I say, you can really be comfortable in here. Four adults, you've got the armrest, of course. It's even got some uh, nice little cup holders there, which is ideal. So yeah, in terms of like doing longer distances in this, with even a family, to be honest, it's perfectly usable. So, what's the G22 4 Series like on the road then? Well, of course the 420D model we've got here isn't the most sporty model you can buy, and yes, it's just the 2 litre diesel, but it does provide some pretty good power figures actually. We're looking at about 190 horsepower and 295 pound foot of torque. So, yeah, it's pretty decent. It gives a 0 to 60 time of 7.1 seconds and a top speed of 149 miles an hour. So, I would say it's pretty adequate. The type of people that are probably going to be buying this car, I would imagine will be doing more longer distances. And therefore it's not necessarily just about out and out speed, but you know, more about the economy over a longer trip. And that's what this car is absolutely made for. The MPG this thing can deliver is truly incredible. I mean, we're averaging right now around 45 MPG. And I mean, the quoted figures on motorway journeys, well, all around of course, are going to be around about 70 miles per gallon. And we actually had this out on some dual carriageway earlier at 70 miles an hour and it was doing about 75 mpg so it's really really impressive this thing literally sips fuel of course as well in this new lineup of cars we've actually got a mild hybrid system which means we've got an 11 horsepower electric motor assisting that diesel engine a little bit along the way and effectively what that's going to do is provide some torque fill lower down as the turbo tries to spool up and um, it also, what I've noticed is when you're driving in the normal mode in comfort and in, in drive, you can just feel it regenerating a little bit of power as you slow down. And it feels like it's probably doing a pretty good job actually of uh, really helping to improve the economy of this car. If you start to push on a bit, I mean, you can hear the engine there. It's not a bad sound, to be honest. It's quite a classic four cylinder diesel sound. And there's definitely a little bit of fakery coming through the speakers, but that's just something we've come to sort of accept at this point. But I don't think it sounds too bad.
Now, the 4 Series really does feel great to drive. We've been driving it all day on these quite nice country B roads we have out here in the North York Moors, and yeah, it just, the suspension feels incredible actually. I've had it in sport mode for the most, for the most part, and what surprised me is how well it still deals with bumps. Quite often, of course, as soon as you whack a car into sport mode, that's effectively it. You can say goodbye to your ride comfort. But this seems to be doing a really good job at absorbing the bumps and keeping the car very settled, even when you're pushing on a bit, which of course helps to inspire a bit of confidence. The steering I've found is also very, very sharp. It's a nice quick ratio. And as I mentioned earlier, the steering wheel is a little bit fat, but actually you get a lot of feedback through this wheel and it feels great. We've also got the nice paddle shifters mounted there, which means you can just take control of the uh, gears a little bit. Of course, in this car, we've got the fantastic ZF 8-speed gearbox, which does a brilliant job, actually. It works really, really nicely with this engine. So we'll just start to push on through this little bit here then. Of course, this is a rear-wheel drive car, so it does feel rear-driven. There's not tons of kind of traction from that back end because it tends to just spin up one wheel. But for the most part, it, it does feel actually pretty fun to drive, even with this diesel engine. But of course, there's just a big chunk of torque down in the low RPMs. In fact, I think the peak torque's around 2,500 RPM. So it really does a pretty good job. Of course, there's not really much point in revving it past about 4,000 because it's not really doing a whole lot at that point. Okay then, so bringing the 420D on some better roads, as I mentioned before, it does feel like it's got really good handling balance actually. I'm not entirely sure what the weight distribution is, but it does feel primarily rear driven. And I love how direct the steering is as well with this faster, the sort of faster rack we're seeing these days. It is so little turns to make around these corners. It feels really agile and disguises its weight very well actually. What I've noticed with this car as well is the brake pedal has a very sort of positive bite on the start. And I think that's probably partly to do with the mile hybrid system. I think it's just regenerating a bit of energy when you first touch the brake pedal and it takes quite a lot of speed off. But actually in sport mode, that's dialed back a little bit and the brake pedal feels great. You know, these, these are big calipers for a car like this that's only sort of doing road driving. Um, so I really doubt they're gonna encounter any brake fade unless you're really, really pushing hard or out on track. So we do have quite a few driving modes on this car actually, including we've got an eco mode, comfort mode, sport mode, and you've also got a totally individual mode, which you can configure to how you like. And there's a bunch of different options in there, you know, like suspension, steering, engine, gearbox. So there's a lot of stuff you can change there. So it works really nicely. And actually in comfort mode, this thing is so, so quiet. So you can barely hear the engine at all. And at 70 miles an hour on like a dual carriageway or motorway, there's just, there's just no wind noise or anything. And as I mentioned before, I think this car is really going to be at home doing those longer distances out on motorways or dual carriageways. So yeah, what do we think then? Well, I very much enjoyed actually trying out a 420D. This is the first BMW diesel engine I've actually tried out. And of course, we know of previous generations, things like the 320 and 420D have been insanely popular cars. They've just sold millions of the things. So I do wonder how many of these they're going to sell. I mean, obviously things have changed a little bit now. Diesels maybe aren't the option most people are going for. Um, there's been some kind of mixed press on them, of course, over the years. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I can totally imagine, you know, maybe the, the businessman, for example, who's traveling further distances, lots of motorway, but also wants something that looks and feels nice and is a premium product. This could be a fantastic car for them. But at just shy of £50,000 as specced in this car, it's certainly not cheap. At that sort of price, we could be getting into all sorts of things. And 
you know, this is just the 420D. You've still got things like the 440i at the top end um, if you really wanted some extra performance, let's say. So, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I'll be interested to see actually how many people do pick these cars up. But if you're in the market for the new 4 Series, I would highly recommend the 420D, actually. Yes, it might not be the most exciting engine, but, you know, you can still have fun in this thing. As I've said, it's rear-wheel drive. You can still throw it around a little bit on these country roads and enjoy it. But in terms of its sort of daily use, if you were just commuting in this thing, occasionally going on some nicer roads, this would be absolutely perfect. Now, I just want to say a huge thanks to Virtue BMW T-Side for making this review possible. They've got tons of great stock in there at the minute, both new and used. So, as always, please do go and check those guys out. I've left all their links in the description below. You can follow them on social media, you can go to their website and see what stock they've got in.